Hey girls, Jamie here. So next week is the official start of the spring season and that means it's time for spring fashion. I love it. New blouses, new skirts, maybe you're even eyeing a new prom dress. Hey, you can never start planning too early on for prom in my book. So get ready as I show you how to complement your own wardrobe with your very own DIY button clutch. Let's do it, girl. For your clutch, you're going to need a base fabric like canvas, cloth, or leather, just to name a few examples. You'll also need a lining fabric like cotton, silk, or polyester. You can buy all of these materials at a craft store, in which case I'd recommend buying about a half a yard of each. To save time and money, you can also use fabric found around the house, like using old kitchen towels for your base cloth fabric or using old t-shirts for your inner cotton lining. A really budget and time-friendly recommendation is just to nab a colorful placemat. Since it already contains both the base fabric and lining, and it costs less than $3 in most stores. You're also going to need scissors, a needle, and thread. You can choose a thread color that matches your fabric or is a complementary color to your fabric for a design that pops. Speaking of a look that pops, go ahead and nab some sew-in decorations. Now this is an optional supply, but I feel like adding in a few personal touches is totally clutch for your clutch. Finally, you're going to need a clasp or button closure. I'm going with the same snap kit that I used with Sohinky on our DIY leather jewelry making episode, but you could also use sew-in buttons, magnetic clasps, or Velcro, just to name a few. All right, it's clutch time, step one. The first step is to measure and cut both of your fabrics to size. Cut both your base fabric and fabric lining to the exact width you want for your clutch. I went with nine inches, then decide upon the length of your clutch and triple the material since you're going to be folding it in on itself. I wanted a length of five inches, so I measured and cut my fabric to three times the length or 15 inches. Step two, you've measured your fabric, you've cut your fabric, now let's sew your fabric. With your lining on top of your base, sew the bottom and side edge together. Keep the top edge free in order to turn your fabric inside out so that your stitching is now hidden within your base fabric. Then sew the top to seal your fabrics together. You want to make sure to sew carefully here so that your stitching can remain secure and your clutch can get a lot of wear without the tear. You can do a classic running stitch here, which is to simply move the thread forward by placing your needle through the top and bottom of your fabric in even sections. Down point A, up point B, down point C, up point D, and so forth. Whenever I sew, however, I tend to favor the back stitch, which starts the same as the running stitch by going down into the fabric, or point A, and back up through point B. But this time, instead of moving the needle forward to a point C, you'll move the needle backwards into the fabric from the stitch before, or back to point A. Then you'll move the needle forward to come up at point C, and then move backward down through point B. Make sense? You're essentially moving your needle two points forward and then one point back, which is why it's called a backstitch. Step three. All right, it's time to transform your fabric into a clutch. Simply fold up the bottom of your fabric a little more than half the way and then fold down the top until you achieve your desired look. All that's left to do is sew both sides of your bottom fold to form the pouch. If you bought a placemat, you could skip steps one and two in order to simply sew the sides together and have a clutch all ready to go. Step four. The final step is to add your clutch's clasp. I followed my snap button kit directions in order to add a button on top of the clasp as well as a closure on the top of the pouch. Like I mentioned earlier, you could also use Velcro or sew in a clasp if you wanted to hide your closure on the inside of the clutch. The last step is to personalize your clutch. Add your own flair by sewing in flowers, sequins, ribbons, jewels, cute animal accents, and more. If it's prom season, you can match your clutch to the color of your dress and add in a flower or two that's going to match your date's corsage. Also, even though I intended this DIY to be a clutch, I know that a lot of you have requested to make a laptop case. All you have to do is repeat these steps with more material and you've got yourself the perfect pouch for your computer or tablet. Or sew in a strap to create your own knapsack. Honestly, this project can work for something as specific as school books or as big as pillowcases. The sky's the limit. Although that would make a pretty tall clutch, so uh, nix that idea. What kind of clutch did you create? Tweet me at Jamie Petito, Instagram me at Hey Jamie, or just tell me all about it in the comments below. We did it, girl. I'm Jamie, and you're on girl.com. Hey, hey you, don't forget to subscribe. Hey, hey you, I'm not a good cheerleader. Answering your clutch questions. Do you have to sew everything together? Not necessarily. If you have iron-on hem tape, you could do that to seal the sides a lot quicker. You could iron on any decals, or you could even try 
gluing in decals with a really strong super glue. Does every clutch have to be a rectangle clutch? No, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and cut out the top part of your clutch into a triangle in order to have more of like an envelope looking clutch. Or you could cut out everything into like a big circle if you wanted more of like a circular pouch clutch. Keys, wallet, chapstick, phone. That's all I need to go ahead and buy some materials for a brand new episode next week. I'll see you then.